Hello everybody, welcome to the class today. I'm Nolan Clark and in this class we're going to be painting a Monopoly inspired artwork. It's a perfect beginner artwork, so follow along and I'll show you step by step how we do that. So in my travels, I found a really cool Monopoly inspired pictures and I thought, wow, I'd really like to do something like that. But obviously these ones were licensed and I don't have no Monopoly license. That will cost a few million dollars. So I've got to paint something in that style without using the actual Monopoly stuff. So I'm going to show you today how we do that, how you can take inspiration from something iconic like Monopoly and turn it into an original artwork that's absolutely unique to you, yet still recognizable as what, whatever you're inspired by. So let me start off by showing you the, the actual artworks that I did see that inspired me for today's class. So these are the artworks here, and as you can see, they're not direct copies of the board, but they are using Mr. Money Bags and so on, and they're giving you nice little motivational sayings, which you can probably hang up around the office and so on, and I think it'll make really great addition to an office. Um, now what I like doing is, I like creating artworks that are more locally inspired. So that's what, I, what we're going to do today. So the first thing I did was I went and uh, dug out my Monopoly board to go and take a look at it and see how could we take the, the, the concept of the Monopoly and, and give it our own little twist so that it's unique. So the first thing that I did, I thought was maybe you can take just a corner of the of the artwork or of the board and make that your artwork. This is your canvas. This whole piece here becomes then your canvas. But then you change all these things, which is a fabulous idea, except for a class, it will take a little bit too long. So as far as that's concerned, I thought I'd simplify it. And we just, same as what the, the example was, the the, the initial inspiration is we'll just use a property. So that was cool. I, I know that the Monopoly boards are usually um, custom for each country so that you have more locally known um, properties showing up and that you're playing with more locally recognizable names. So I took this, and I took this, and I quite like the, the little icons that they, they're using in the in some of these guys, the electric and the um, stations and the free parking and so on. But obviously, again, those are little, probably copyright, I couldn't take that same little logo there. So we'd have to make our own little icon. So what I've come up with is this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I've created the the artwork on the computer. So if you're watching the replay of this and you don't want to watch that, I'll, I'll leave a link below then you can jump forward to the actual painting side of things. Alrighty. So first things first, you've got to find a, a size of canvas that's Roughly the same proportions as your as your monopoly little property tickets and and uh, spaces on the board. So I hunt around, hunted around, and I found a thirteen and a half by nineteen and a half inch canvas. So that's roughly three hundred and forty five millimeters by five hundred millimeters. And that seemed to be 
a good roughly in proportion to the to the monopoly tickets so the first thing i did was i went and drew myself just a a rectangle around there and uh, what you obviously now need to do is just uh get yourself some f some form of um similarity so if you take a look let's maybe see if i can just overlay the the board here for a second Let me just see if I can add that in. Let's pop that down over there. So what I did was I just try and try to match the the color of these property guys over here. So I drew one there and, and then gave it a bit of a um, an outline. Because these guys here they they outlined but they obviously not outlined right against each other where the cards themselves were outlined a little off the off the edge and I quite like that little off the edge outline so the next um, uh, next I drew a, a rectangle at the top and that's where the the property name goes in like that now you need to add some some text and stuff so I could see here on these guys. Let's go in on that. It says title deed and then the and then the street name. So you've got it says title deeds and then the 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 property name. The title deeds sounded odd for me. Why would you have a deeds when it's one single property? So what I did was I said title deed over there now you can't just use any old font so what i did was I, I did go and look at this this font over here and and see what fonts do i have on my computer and i found a few that were quite similar the first one was century gothic and i think you'd probably have that on your computer as well it's quite a quite a common font um, the one i used was listen as l-i-s-s-e-n and then there was another one that I also found was U Gothic. It's Y U Gothic U I. And then I used local um, popular um, scenery around here by us. So I used just local scenery's names. So the one of our lookouts over here is called uh, the Dury Hill Tower. So I, I gave it the name Dury Hill. And now you need to create that um, that icon itself. So this is what Dury Hill actually looks like. So it's a it's a tower. This is a like a war memorial tower, and this here is an hundred year old. Um, Uh, what do you call it? Elevator. So this is just the tower for that. So it makes a nice little lookout over there. And I, I have painted this guy before. So I just used my my own artwork. And I popped that down there to get sort of the, the correct size. And because it was already done in like pop art style, I already had my, my outlines done for me. So what I did was I just used the pen tool. So if you got your own um, drawing software, you can now go and use the pen tool and do that as well. So let's just go and zoom in here and I'll show you how I did it. So you're just taking the pen tool and you're just drawing your lines. Just literally clicking. For this it was easy, they were just straight lines. So it was literally just a few clicks. Now to iconize something like this, what you want to do is just simplify what you've got. So just draw in, start off with the outlines of the object, of the building or whatever it is. And just get those little outlines sketched in. So you can see I'm just clicking on each one of these little corners over here. 
And then what it's doing is it's drawing me those those little outlines. So I'll do the one here like this. And let me hide that that artwork that I've put down there. So you could use the photo of whatever you're busy with and and do that. So once you've got the basic outline, then look for the absolute um the the, the most important features for example here there's that there and then you've got these windows and then just that little edge running down there because this here is just like an extra little let me bring up the photo again can you see it's just like an extra little piece that's built out over here from the rounded tower itself on this guy over here there's literally just these few little outlines to do over there I, I didn't even bother adding in fine details like that so end of the day once I've drawn once I've drawn all my outlines all I did was I just fiddled with the with the width of that outline and until it looked like it was nicely in proportion so what I went for was a, a line that was just thicker than the actual um, the wording itself so let's just get that whole image in, in, in scene again. Let's turf these little outlines that we've drawn and I'll show you what did the actual the actual outline end up looking like. So you had just that over there, a few little goodies. And and then I decided, well, this tower is actually an orangey colour, so why not? Let's make that one orange. And we make the other one white and that would make it stand out quite nicely then on the card itself here at the bottom you've normally got the the price of the properties but i didn't want the price i didn't want to add a price to something like this it's a, it's a public thing it's not a something that you'd physically buy so I, I thought instead of adding a price let's rather add just a little saying to that So that's what I did. I added this little saying on over here, which was just views. Then in the end of the day, I uh, I now have the opportunity of making multiple. So this is going to become a series of paintings. So I've actually already painted this painting over here, and I'll show it to you in a second. I've designed this one over here, which is this fountain is in the main road along our our, our main shopping s the the main road with all the shops in it. It's at the start of that road, so it's called Watt Fountain, and that's where all the shopping happens. And then our beach itself is called Castle Cliff. So I added the relax words and the the flip flops. So this is the one that we're going to be painting today. So let me show you the one that I've already done and then you can get a feel for what it would look like in the end of the day. So it is quite a, 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 a large canvas, long canvas. So if I had to show it to you the right way around, it would be just really small on the screen. So just uh, <laughs> flip your head sideways for a second to, to take a look at that. So just to keep things a little bit more interesting as well, what I've done is I've just added a little bit of texture in here. And I thought that'll be a nice little, just an extra technique that we can use. That we aren't just blocking stuff in. Then there's something more for the viewer to see besides the, the local scenes and stuff. So if you are a patron, you can go and download the, the references that I have given you today. I gave you all the, the ones that I have designed plus the ones that we're doing today. And if you're working on the same size canvas, there is a, a tiled template that you can go and print out and make up and then just transfer to your canvas. So what's really important when you're transferring to the canvas, 
because this is normally a, a printed item, we need to get these wordings and stuff painted in really quite accurately. So to keep with that, this is a, a like a ticket or a card effect. I did also choose the the thinner canvases. They they're not the thick ones, the thick base canvases like I usually use. So I'm going to take this, and once they're all painted, then there'll be a set of three or more, and then I'm going to varnish these guys with a a high gloss varnish, and that'll also help to make it look. Fancy and, and, and like a printed card because they often do print on that little um, brighter layer. So I just used standard pen carbon to, to transfer all these outlines. So here I just outlined just a single line, not the whole width. Um, we'll use the thickness of the, the pens to, um, to give us these widths. Then here, that's very thin, so I just drew... Uh, 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 the line in the center of each letter here and here they're broader so what I've done there is I've actually gone all the way around the outline of each letter so that you ended up with a full-on outline like that so that hopefully the pen width will be that width if it's not then you can go and color it in and get those outlines correct then the same here with the with the flip-flops I just used the just went along the center of each line because we'll use the thickness of the pen to to create that thickness over there so you don't have to paint it multiple times so that's what's going to be so much fun today we're actually going to be using pens so i've got here a, a liquitex acrylic marker pen and then my uh my broader one was just too broad on the on the liquid text so I went and found the uh, a Pasca pen somebody was asking me in the previous class when we did the the art nouveau portrait what was the difference between these say the liquid text uh, acrylic markers and the Pasca pens and to be all in all honesty it's more of the same it's just a different brand name so this one here is a bit broader he looks like that and he's is roughly that thickness over there so I was quite happy with that that worked out perfectly. And then this guy over here, he is roughly that thickness over there. So we should be good to go on that. And that will save us lots and lots of time trying to paint these things nice and even with a brush. Eh? Much, much more efficient using that. But for now, we need to get that background colors um, painted in. So this one here of, of using the, the light blue. Let me just get my my card again so we need to roughly match that it doesn't have to be perfect just in the ballpark and then from the board the board had the the green background over here so I decided to, I, I quite like that because it gives you extra color whereas that looks a little bit a little bit boring so adding the extra green in there is, is better so we've used that as far as the colors are concerned and use more of this as far as the actual uh, the wording and the icons and stuff are concerned so that's what we need to go and do now is just get ourselves that blue and that green so we'll head over to the palette let's pop that down over there we can just reference from it how can I put it down over there so the first color I'm going to use is some titanium white. Yeah, that's, I think we can put a fair amount down there because we've got that whole canvas which we essentially need to cover. Let's just bring some of that down. Let's maybe bring down, say, so much. And we'll use that for the, for the blue. So now I do want to get a mottled effect on that um blue area so we'll use different tonal values to get that mottled effect so we'll start off by just painting it with a a lighter color so that is sorry i didn't tell you that that was cerulean blue that i put down over there so 
So I'll get it more or less just a little bit lighter than this guy over here. And then the next color will be darker. So in between this lighter one and the darker next color, they should even out and give us that. Yeah, more or less. Cool, so that one's fine. He's, he's done and dusted, so let's put him one side. And you know what? I think let's go and let's go and paint that background with that, because otherwise our, our green is just going to stand around drying on us. Alrighty, let's go to there. And I'm just going to use a just a good old What's that? Probably about a, an inch. Just a standard bristle brush. Nothing fancy. And then I think here to get this, let's go wide. Let's go to here. We want to keep these edges nice and, and sharp. So let's take some masking tape. And let's just mask off these edges over here. So now here's an interesting thing. You'll often find that your canvas itself is not square. So what I'm actually doing is I'm using that line as a guide to get myself roughly in the right place. But I'm actually judging it with the, the distance that I have between here, the edge of the canvas, and the, and the edge of the tape. In other words, the box that you paint may actually be slightly skew, but it'll be straight with the edges of your canvas, and then it will look right. And with this, you know, also know that because your, your masking tape is a fixed thickness, you're going to have all these distances are going to be the same. Even though you, you may have initially put your drawn lines down a little bit skew on the canvas, you know, you maybe put your, your template down a little bit skew and so on. But doing this, you know it's going to be perfect. Alrighty, so there's that edge over there, and then just this edge over here as well. So him I'm now putting on the line because I want that inside bit over there to be the just want to move him up slightly just to make sure that that gap and that gap is roughly the same. There that should be better. Great, let's go and block that area in over there. So the first thing what you want to do before you start painting is just make sure that these guys are nice and dark. If they're not, put your template back down again and just darken them up. If you've used pen carbon, they should shine through. So now when I'm painting the edges here against the masking tape, I'm never painting this way into the masking tape like this because then the paint can run in underneath or be squashed in underneath. I'm going to run along the edge or inwards like that. That's where you can get it nicely up to the edge, nice and neat. Without it running in underneath the, underneath the masking tape.
Great, just a nice thin, even, even coating over there, like that. That should be fine. Right, so we need to get this dry. So I think maybe what we can do is, well, in, instead of drying things twice, let's let's now do that green, and then that that'll give that guy a, a chance to dry, and then while we're painting that, then this can, can dry a bit. And that should save us a, li a little bit of hair dryer drying time. Now I also want to make sure that that there doesn't dry on me while I'm busy painting the other stuff. So I'm going to take a, a, a spray bottle just with some water in it. Just a plain spray bottle like this. Because I, I can't have that drying on me. So I'm going to spray the palette. <laughs> Let me just move that card out the way. Don't want to destroy him in the process. Then I can't play uh, Monopoly again later. Awesome. That's quite a big area over there on that, um, that green edge over there. So I'm now sitting with an interesting situation because I've already painted one of these guys. I need to match this color again. I need to get that color the same. So what I've done is I've kept a little bit of that other color inside one of these. So if you've never seen one of these before, this is a little holder that you use for baby formula. So if you've got a young baby and you want to go out, then you put one one meal, one meal, one meal in each of these. So then when you go out, you can go and just take that off and, and there's one meal. You can chuck it into the into the water and, and create a, a meal with it. So, yeah, my kids are well big now, but I've kept these guys because I've, I use them for the painting now. <laughs> if I need to save my paints, they work awesome. So I'm just going to take some of this color, this paint that I've got left, and I'm going to put it down here. So what's nice about these guys is because they, they, they're meant to store food and stuff, they seal airtight. And that's why your paint stays nice and, nice and wet in them for ages and ages. Awesome. So to get that green, what I've used was titanium white. And a bit of sap green. Not much, just a little bit. So I'm going to take all that and just add like less than half a pea size in here. And let's start off with that and let's see how close do we get to that original color. Obviously you don't need to match a color yet because this is your first one. So you can use the, the board itself the Monopoly board as a base to get your the color that you want. Alrighty, so when I'm matching a color, I'm going to mix in the colors that I need and now I'm comparing these two guys here and I'm trying to see what do I need? What's missing? So as I as I get these guys closer to each other, I'm gonna see in this case it's easy. I, I'm gonna be missing some either white or it's gonna be green. But if there's multiple colours, you're gonna try and see do I need to add more blue, more red, more yellow, more green? Then you add that colour to the mix. And then once I get this colour Similar. Now I'm going to start bringing these two colors next to each other. Like this. I even take some of that and just bring it next to it. And see if, can I see the difference? If I can't see the difference like here, I can see, yep, now I've got the same color. Then you can take them and you can mix them into each other. Like that. Fabulous. Let's wash our brush and let's paint in that other one. So 
So you can work in a little bit of water into this if you want to, just to get it to go onto the canvas easier. But don't make it too watery because then it's going to take too long to to dry. So here we do want. No, let's go to the wide camera. We do want the inside of our flip-flops to be white. So I'm going to paint all the way around these flip-flops. If you go slightly over the line, it's not a it's not a catastrophe because you're going to use the line as your as your guide. You're going to have a nice thick black line out outlining this anyway. The words you can go straight over. That's all right, because that that's black. That's not a problem whatsoever. And then you do want to try and get this as as even a color as what you can. This one here is not going to get any texture to it. So just get yourself a nice even color by working in multiple directions. And that's where you know you're getting into the weave of the canvas equally in all directions. There we go, nice and easy, and I think I've got enough paint left over for my, my third canvas. So I'm going to be quite happy about that. I don't have to go and match this color again. So obviously I'm not adding an extra texture here, but you're most welcome to do it, you know. Use your, use your imagination. I would say just don't make it too busy. If you make it too busy, then you're going to battle. It's going to distract you from the actual the icons and the words and stuff. Okay, let's make sure everything is nice and even. What I usually do is I, I just come back right at the end of the day and just get all my brush strokes in the same direction. So in this case, I'll get them all going downwards. That also helps give you an even, even coloring because the light isn't reflecting off all these different brush marks in different angles. reflecting off them all in the same angle because they're all in the same direction. Make sure your edges are nice and sharp. Alrighty, let's see. They are actually accidentally went into the Flip flop. So I'm just using a bit of a, a, a clean brush, but I've dipped it in the water, so it is a little bit wet. Just damp, not sopping wet. I, I dip it in the water, and then on my cloth like that, just so it's got moisture on it. And then because the brush is clean, it just pushes that that color back. Yeah, there, just like that. That seems good. Let's see, is there anywhere else that I went over the line? Over here, just a little bit. Just keep washing your brush. What I'll often do here is I'll even just give this white, just a layer of neat white paint, just to make sure that it stays one even color. But I think we survived that one. 
Alrighty. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry this guy off with the with a the hairdryer. Then we'll come back in and we'll texture this bit over here. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art classes on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. Yeah, there we go. Let's see how good my color mixing was. Yeah, not too bad. They should look, they should look similar <laughs> when they're up on the wall. Alrighty, so we want to texture this and we need to protect that. We don't want to get that um, dirty again because then we'd have to repaint it. So I'm just going to take two sheets of, of photocopy paper. Just pop that down there and then we'll just use some uh, masking tape and stick them down. It should be enough distance there so that we don't accidentally go into that area there. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's go back to the palette and get that new color. All right, so let's just take some more of the cerulean blue. And let's mix it in here. Uh, and uh, what I want to do is just make sure that you've got a little pile of the original color lying over there. So we can now take this and make sure that you've got a, a good contrast. I think I'm even going to throw in all of that. You want a good contrast between the two. So that when you do lay the one over the other, you can distinctly see it. I think I'll even add a little bit more. It does have a good contrast, but what the heck, I'll be a little bit more bold. Why not? It's quite a... How would you put it? It's not a subtle painting. So you can, you can be quite bold as long as you stay still within those basic that basic color palette of what we have on the monopoly board we're ready for a way okay can you see there there's a good a good contrast between those guys over there yet it's still in the ballpark it's still in the ballpark so here's a few shades darker, and that one is a few shades lighter. So hopefully in the end of the day, they'll now even each other out. Okay, so to get this texture onto the canvas, I'm going to add a lot of water into this paint over here. I want it to be really thin, like literally like watery. So there's a few ways to get a mottled effect. 
So one of my favorite ways to, to do is to use the just a bit of cling film. So let's go back to there. So I'm going to take just some some cling film. Um, in the US, I think you call it saran wrap. So I'm just going to drag him out so it is larger than the area that I want to texture. And then I'll take my brush. Give him a wash, get rid of the green on there. And I'm going to pick up that paint and I'm just going to paint it over here. So all you want to do is just make sure that you've got this whole area covered at least you can have a larger area covered that's fine and I'm going to take this whole piece of wrap and just carefully flip him over so now the paint has gone from the the top to the bottom and I'm just going to wrinkle and crinkle this up. Just drag it in. Just wrinkle and crinkle it. So you can press down quite hard because there where you're pressing, there, that's where the paint is now. The original paint is staying. And where the wrinkles are, that's where the, that's where the texture is going to be. So that's going to give us a, a good start to our texture. And I'll just lift him up there like that. Carefully roll up your um, cling film. Chuck that away. All right, so you can you can see we've really got a quite a nice little texture going on over there. And now you can continue building on that texture, and you can refine it as well. And to do that, you take some some of your your paper towel. Just take a piece of paper towel like this. I'm going to roll it up. Now I'm going to dip a corner into the water. So it has lots of water on there now. So I'll just tap off the excess so that it doesn't... Where are we? Over there. Just tapping off the excess just so that it doesn't run or, or give me a big puddle here on the... on the painting itself. And I'm going to take this wet and I'm going to just tap it here and there. And you can see, let me just tap one spot. So keep your eye over there. Can you see how it's lifted that out over there? Just taps. And that's going to just lighten up even more other little areas and so on. And when this guy gets too full, you can unwrap him and then wrap him up again. Or unfurl him and unfurl furl him back up again. So this is now also helping just getting you a bit of extra texture and stuff in you. It's a bit of a messy business, but that's fine. There we go. All right, let's stand back. All right, so see there. Now we've got ourselves a nice little bit of texture. And you can stand back and decide how much how much you want. If you decide, for example, that's a little, a little bit too spotty, then just work him a little bit more. If you want him, maybe he's a little bit too light, then just tap your, your, your paper into your paint. And then you can darken him back up again if you want. So you can decide uh, how mottled do you want it, little or a lot. Okay, let's take off this. 
so I'm happy with it like that. I think it's, it's giving us a nice little a nice little bit of interest over there. Let's take that off and we survey the damage. Because you're always going to have little areas where maybe it's run in underneath or areas over here where the masking tape didn't fully cover. So I'm going to use my my clean brush just wet him up because this paint is still reasonably um it hasn't it hasn't um cured yet so if you just go over it with a wet brush like that that paint will lift up and disappear on you So if you've got small places like that where you know you're going to go over with the black, don't bother. It's like here, areas like this that need to remain white. Just come in here and, and just clean those guys up. Now this time, where before your, your, your brush was just a little bit damp, yeah, you can have a fair amount of water. and You just use the paper towel just to dry up that water so I'm going to clean up this as best I can now just to get as much of that that paint gone that I don't want And then at the end of the day, I'll usually come in and just give all the white bits just a layer of white paint as well. And that just simply allows me to, if I do have oopses or boo-boos, it allows me to just repaint that area without having a difference in color. It will still seem bright because it's the same color. Okay, dokie, let's zap that with a hairdryer quickly, just to make sure he's dry before we start adding our lettering over it. Cool. Alrighty. So now with the the fun starts with the with the pins. So whenever you're using your pins, the first thing you want to do before you start using it is just make sure that the pen itself has been primed. So what you do is you take your your pen and just pump it a few times. Because what happens is when you pump it, it lets some of the ink or the paint that's here flow into this tip over here. So this tip here is sort of, I don't know what it's made of. It's quite a hard kind of spongy material. But it allows it to, to flow into there. And then I just on a piece of paper not on directly onto your canvas can you see i've put it put something down there just make sure it's giving you a nice solid even coating and even then as you work every now and again you'll see that you'll have to 
the, the amount of paint that's now inside the tip runs out. So then you have to just fill him back up again. So for this top one, all I'm going to do is just use the tip. And just get myself a nice thin little little wording over there. I've put the, the line on the wrong one. My uh, lines were a little bit missing there. So I'll just have to carefully cover that up in a in one or two layers of paint. So I'll let that dry there so long and then I can go over him with another layer. So with the next one, I think I'm going to just do that, put the, the thing next to me so that I can just confirm everything. If things are missing, then you just do the ones that you, what you n can clearly see. And once you've got that in, it allows you to uh, easier estimate the other guys that you can't see so nicely. And obviously the other alternative is put your uh, put your template back and just redraw redraw your outlines. Guys, if you're enjoying the class so far, just please give the give the video a like. That's how YouTube knows that the class is worthwhile showing to to other artists.
So here I'm just using the, the width of the of the pin to give me the width of the letter. And that's why now I'm getting it even all the way across. So what I have found with these pens is, as you're working with it, if you want to go over the same area, you have to wait for the, the, the paint to dry. Luckily it does dry within seconds. But if you go over it while you still, while it's still wet, sort of lifts up the previous layer and it doesn't look good. So if you do need to go over a piece just just be patient. Wait a few seconds. Carry on with the next bit or whatever. Okay let's continue hiding that uh, oopsie of mine over there. <laughs> That's why it's always good to have some of your some of your paints left over before you chuck them. Always keep paint until right till till the painting is finished. Yeah, that looks better. Alrighty, so there's that guy done. So that went quite quickly. Hey, imagine trying to paint all that with the... Uh, with a brush. Awesome. I think I'm going to do these words while I've got this pen out. Then it's then then I'm done with this pen. I can go over to using the the broader one. So now you may be wondering to yourself, how do you keep your hand nice and steady? The way I keep my hand steady is I keep my r my th this part of my hand. Um, I keep that on the canvas. That doesn't move. So all I'm moving is my fingers. And you'll find that if you do that, it, it's reasonably steady. You're just using your fingers, because your fingers can do fine motor movement, but your whole hand can't.
awesome so that's one done now I'm gonna go over to my my Posca pen so this one is eight millimeters wide with this one was let's see it says two to four millimeters so it's four millimeters that and two millimeters that when using the tip alrighty so first thing you want to do is just make sure that he's he's charged up so give him a one or two pumps like that So you do not need to keep the whole length or the whole that whole width there on the canvas at the all at the same time. To make sure that you get that, that good width over there. you find it does take a little bit of practice getting that getting that right actually because you've got to keep that angle all the way through There's one. Then every now and again, just give your, your pen a pump, just so that it um, recharges itself. And that's where you know you're not going to run out of paint halfway through a stroke like this. So hopefully today what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that you don't need insanely complicated artworks. But I think you agree, this is super simple to do, this is really easy. You don't need crazy complicated artworks to make nice artworks and artworks that will sell. All you need is just a good idea. If you can get yourself with a good idea and you don't need to always come up with that idea yourself, you can take inspiration from other people. All right, so let's hang on with that for now. So I'm going to go back to the smaller one and just round off those little tips over there. And like here, I can see I didn't quite press hard enough and I didn't get a nice even pressure. So there's a few little, you can almost call them pixels of the canvas that are showing through some of the green. So I'm just going to go over that and like here there's a little bit of an edge over there where I I, I had to start one stroke and end the, and the next one. So I'm just using the, the small pen and just fine tuning those one or two little goodies over there. And that just neatens everything off and as you can see it only takes a few seconds 
because you do want it to have that a, a, a reasonable bit of accuracy so that it does look like it's been well it doesn't look like it's been printed but it's it's, it's replicating that Alrighty, so we're so close to finished. All we need to do is this outline. And it's really easy to do that outline. Let me show you how to do it. You're going to take a ruler. So what I've got here is a plastic ruler. But on this ruler, on this edge here where the numbers are, on the top, it's got a bit of a bevel. So if I look at it from the side, it does this. So you've got that bit of a bevel over there. So I'm going to take that bevel and I'm going to put it on the bottom. In other words, I'm putting this ruler now upside down where I want to draw my line. So that here, where I'm actually drawing the line, this ruler is not touching the canvas. It's lifted off the canvas over there. So I'm going to put that down there, right up against this blue. And I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to draw myself a line. Running up against the ruler. Look at that. Perfect line. Now, before I put the ruler back down again, I'm going to take my T-shirt or a cloth or a piece of paper towel and I'm going to wipe this off so that if there is any wet um, paint still left over, it's not on the ruler. Sorry about the head there for a second. Just need to see what I'm doing. So here on these corners, I'm going to try and get them to meet perfectly. But if they don't, I'll make them rather stop a little bit before each other. So that I don't go over like I did over there. You, you don't want to do that. Because then you've got to paint that white again. It's easier to... To fill up that little corner using the, f the finer paint pen.
see how quick and easy it is to to fill up that that corner if you need to all right then there's one last thing you need to do i'm just going to take a little bit of white paint pick that up and i'm going to just give a light little coating all the way along the edge here In transit and all those things, these these canvases do get a little bit of dings and dents and so on. A little bit of dirtiness. So just by giving that a light little coat of paint, you, you're closing up any of those little marks. And you're also just evening out the color. But now be careful that you don't paint your... over your lines and stuff. I suppose you could have done this before. I just like to do it at the end because then I know this. There's no more marks coming onto it afterwards. Accidentally. So I'll, I'll, com I'll complete that last little bit outside of class, and you can do the same here with your uh, the white bits over here. Just give it a quick little little coating. Because you'll also find that this white paint is more vibrant than the than the gesso that's on the canvas so it does look better and while you're doing this if you've must gone over any little areas you paint over it with your white for example if you've gone your taken your black and you've got a little mark somewhere yeah you just paint over it just paint after all. Alright, so I won't do this because you're, you're basically watching nothing happen. <laughs> With same colour happening on the same colour. So it's not adding value. So I'm going to stop here. You, you can see what I'm doing. That's all I wanted you to do is just see what I'm doing. And, and hopefully you can see the difference between there and there. Can you see? This is a little bit more vibrant then that's over there so we'll we'll leave it at that there's there's the one there's the other one then i still have the other one the other one left to go then i have a, a set of three i'll varnish them up with some nice uh varnish them up with some nice super glossy varnish then they'll look good because if you had in, have enjoyed today's class don't forget to to do that then I can uh, inform you when I go live again so I hope you enjoyed today's class really super easy isn't it but still nice and beautiful effective painting it'll look up on your wall and to sell if you do something like this with your local uh, scenes iconize them like I showed you on the computer with the names that people recognize and a nice little happy saying underneath they'll sell like hotcakes I know what they will take care I'll see you next time guys in the live class thanks for joining me I hope you had a uh, enjoyed today's class have yourself a wonderful weekend take care